You know, there are literally hundreds of experiments taking place on board the International Space Station. Each and every expedition, while the astronauts and the cosmonauts are up there, one of the most important lessons that the International Space Station is teaching us is how the human body actually reacts to being up there for up to six months. When we take a look at going to Mars or going to an asteroid or those longer type missions, how our bodies react to those types of journeys is going to be incredibly important. We're here at the cardio cardiovascular lab here at the Johnson Space Center. I'm joined by Stuart Lee, who is one of the lead scientists for this laboratory. Stuart, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, what this lab does, and then we'll take a look at some of these machines uh, back behind us. So the main objective of this laboratory, of course, is to look at how the cardiovascular system in particular responds to effects of lack of gravity or weightlessness. Right. We're involved in several studies. One of the most important ones we're doing right now is the Integrative Cardiovascular Experiment. Integrative Cardiovascular Experiment, or ICV, is a multi-center study headed up by Dr. Ben Levine at UT uh, Southwestern and uh, Dr. Mike Bungo at UT Health Sciences Center in collaboration with Johnson Space Center and with uh, the Cleveland Clinic to give a good comprehensive evaluation of what happens to the heart in particular as a result of being in weightlessness. So let's talk about it real basically. The heart's a muscle. Yes. Muscles react kind of strangely to being up in space. We're still learning kind of what happens. So right. talk about kind of what we've learned about how the heart and the rest of the muscles react and what this ICV actually looks at and how it works. So everybody probably has heard about muscle wasting or atrophy that happens in the scale of the muscles, in your, particularly in your legs and also in your arms. Okay. Same sort of thing happens to the heart. Most people don't realize that their blood actually has weight to it and your cardiovascular system has to work in order to get blood from your bottom part of your body back up to your heart and particularly to your brain. Because of gravity. Because of gravity, okay. exactly. And so what we're looking at is because you lose those uh, gravitational forces, it actually has an effect on the heart. That heart actually can get smaller as a result of not having to work as hard in space. So that's called cardiac atrophy. And what we're doing is looking at not just what happens with cardiac atrophy during space flight, but how it affects other things that you would normally do. Your blood pressure regulation when you're standing up, the exercise that you would normally do, or in the case of an astronaut, the EVAs that they have to do, as well as just the general function of the heart and the, the electrical conduction through the heart. Okay, so let's talk about how you measure it. What, the, what does the crew do? We've got these two machines here, which are ultrasound machines, right? Right, yep. Okay, so let's talk about them. So what we do normally is we look at, the first thing we want to do is look at the function and the size of the heart. Uh -huh. The way that you would do that uh, scientifically is you'd use MRI. The other the way that you can do it is an ultrasound scan. The ultrasound scan has the, abil the, the, uh, the ability to have that device on orbit. And so we do measurements of the heart um, pre and in and post flight using the ultrasound. And you can see this is an image of the heart, actually uh, some images that we captured early mm -hmm. showing how the different ventricles of the heart and then and the atrium. And so how blood flows through there and then how the, the heart actually contracts. So this is actually what the crew member would see? Or so look at it? this is what we would collect on the ground. One of the neat parts of this experiment is that we actually collect the data on orbit. And rather than having the astronauts become experts in, in sonography, we have one of our experts, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. David Martin, who actually guides them on orbit how to do the ultrasound on orbit. And this is the device that we use for that. This is the actual machine that's up there. So th there's one just like this on orbit. And what, what David can do is he can then tell them where to place the probe, how to angle it, because those are all very important things. And then he teaches them, tells them how to, what buttons to push in order to get the images that they, that they need for the experiment. Um, so that he's sitting in mission control, he sees the images they see, and he also sees them doing the work. So it's not like they have to become a PhD or an MD to, to right. run these type of machines. Yeah. They, they just take some basic training, and then uh, the, the ground teams can really kind of guide them through. Right. You know. Yeah. Now talk about the, the color. I find this kind of interesting because our astronauts are incredibly smart people. But we, this color coding, talk about about it. It makes it a little bit easier for them to basically know which button to push. Right. right. So, you know, there's lots of different buttons on here and they've got all their own little labels on it. And it means a lot to the sonographers, the people who normally do this stuff. But it doesn't necessarily mean a lot to, you know, an astronaut who hasn't had as much training. So David could say, you know, push pink number two mm -hmm. and, and that they would know exactly where to go to it. This is a template specifically designed for this purpose by NASA to be able to do this sort of stuff. One of the neat Earth applications of this is that if you were in a remote environment, and you needed ultrasound, you could actually have a non-expert collect ultrasound in the same fashion that David or, or, or someone like him could guide them through the procedure and, and do a diagnosis where there isn't a doctor. Yeah. 
So you could just, get, this has applications here on Earth, yes. but, but you know, you're not physically there with your doctor or somebody telling you what to do, but you yeah. can actually kind of sort of, I think I could probably even figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a neat little system. So talk about, you know, this ICV experiment. What, what have we learned about the heart? And, and, you know, you said it gets smaller, but how do you, how do you combat that? Like, what, what would you do to... Well, the best way that we know, how, or the, the way we're doing it now is with exercise. Mm -hmm. And so exercise on the ground makes muscles grow. It also helps the heart as well. And so we do the same sort of thing on orbit. The astronauts participate in treadmill exercise and cycling exercise as well as weightlifting type exercises. And all those sorts of things are good for the human body. Um, what we've learned so far is kind of interesting that we expect there's a certain amount of individual variability among astronauts. Some people lose more, some people lose less. What's pretty cool about the preliminary data so far suggests is that the amount of exercise or, or work, you know, cardiac work that your heart does on orbit is actually related to the amount of atrophy we see. So somebody who does a little more loses less their, of their cardiac mass, and people who end up doing less than they would normally do on the ground would lose more. So there's a direct correlation between yes. basically how much so exercise far. you put yep. into it. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's, the study's about halfway through, so we're still learning a lot. So I don't want to put too much yeah. stock in it's that. It's been going on for three, three years? Three years. Um, we've got three crew members on orbit right now. And we've got a couple more after that. Uh, we should be done in the next couple of years, and we should be able to start disseminating the results at that point. How often do they do they do this type of experiment? I mean, they're very busy up there. So how often do they actually, you know, work with this uh, type of experiment? How often do they participate in? So we have a couple data or several data collections before flight. So we get an idea of what their heart looks like and how it functions on the ground, as well as we get an idea of uh, the amount of uh, work that their heart does using what's called ambulatory monitoring, where we we measure blood pressure and heart rate throughout 48 hours. So we get a baseline of what they normally do, uh, their typical day, and then we repeat that five times on orbit. So early in the mission, all the way to the end of the mission, we'll repeat those measurements of sonography and then the cardiac work measurements. Um, the sonography, you know, takes about half an hour, 45 minutes to do the measurements. We do it both at rest and during exercise. Um, and then the, the other stuff that we call ambulatory monitoring, where they wear the, it's an EKG and blood pressure monitor, um, that they wear, wear for 48 hours. It doesn't really in, interfere with their day per se. So they're able to do their normal activities because what we're trying to capture is what they normally do. That's fascinating. It, it, it's interesting that we're still learning about the human body and how it, how it behaves up there because it it's quite different. Right. There's a, there's a lot to learn and, and everybody's different and we're trying to figure out what the best countermeasures are to get us to Mars and, and to other uh, planetary surfaces so we can learn more about our solar system. Well, thanks a lot, Stuart. Thank we'll you. be back in just a few minutes and we'll be talking about yet another experiment that's going to be on board the space station that the crew is going to be participating in in the future that uses the same type of equipment and talk about what the purpose of that is. We'll be back in a few minutes.